What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Man, we are working on a few different things today. Today's gonna be, well, I don't wanna call it a vlog style video, but we're gonna be working on multiple projects. Um, I'm gonna show you what happened to the C4 Corvette. Everybody's been asking about this. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into that. Yes, I've been working on it. And yes, I've ordered parts. As I said, I wouldn't. I said I was not going to spend another dime on this thing. I wasn't gonna do another thing to it. And I couldn't help it. I can't, uh, I can't give up on it. Now, does that mean we're going to tear the whole thing apart? No. No, no, no. No, guys. I'm going to fix the fuel leak. I'm going to fix the fuel leak. Make sure she runs. We're going to get the tires replaced, which means i got to get these front tires off with the lock on them. And that's been a bear. I'll show you guys real quick. A lot of you said just throw a, uh, throw a socket over it. Yeah. I tried that, and that didn't work. I also bought a master... Uh, wheel lock kit from Harbor Freight that also didn't work <laughs> so uh, we got to figure out how to get those front tires off that's that's a huge huge deal I'll bring you around here and I'll show you what happened it's pretty uh, pretty obvious it made itself uh, made itself known we'll uh, see if we can zoom in here oops there it goes the battery charger you see maybe Maybe not, I don't know. Uh, the uh, cold start injector, all right? Back here is your primary vacuum source, right? Okay, right here, underneath it, you can't see, there's a line, right? Right there, that tiny line, that runs to the fuel rail. That is the cold start injector. The cold start injector O-ring is leaking. So, I found, <coughs> excuse me, I found an O-ring for it, and uh, that should take care of it. But listen, guys, listen to this. Yeah. She still runs. Tomorrow I have a gentleman coming that's going to do 15% window tint on this, which means he's got to remove all this old crappy tint. I know a lot of you think that window tint is a waste of money. Let me tell you something, guys. You see how bright red that is? You see how that red just pops, even in the dark like this? That red pops. You put some black tire shine on those tires, right? You get some 15% black windows on this with the strip across the front window. Oh my God, guys, it's gonna set that car off. It will. The Caprice is sitting here. It's getting 15% also, because believe it or not, white with a dark black window tint is hot. This car is gonna be going down to the Auto Spot LLC very soon to get it cleaned up, to get it cleaned up, to get cleaned up. We're going to do on video uh, also installing this new instrument cluster. We'll probably do that at the same time as the detail on this. And then once this one's detailed, this is going down the road. Now, today is a big day for the Nissan Altima. Number one, you guys might remember this bumper was all popped out. It was all kinds of hanging out and, and just, it looked ugly. Well, I put it back in and it lines up beautifully. So we got that taken care of. It's heading down to the Auto Spot LLC for a detail as well because well, it's, I mean, look at it, guys. It's filthy. We're not going to spend a lot of time going over the, the cosmetics on this right now because she's, she's a dirty girl. She's a dirty girl. But we got to get this thing down to, to uh, AAR headquarters because, because it needs that check engine light figured out. We got to figure out what's going on with that. We also are going to charge the AC in this today as well. And it, yeah, you can see I'm adding fluid. The last video you guys may have saw uh it was low it wasn't even registering on the dipstick so i had <laughs> i hit up advanced auto parts man they came to my door within two hours of ordering they showed up at my door with three quarts of this uh ns1 or ns2 i'm sorry equivalent uh valvoline not sponsored transmission fluid so i'm currently filling it up making sure everything is right because we're about to take this on the highway for the first time and we're gonna be driving over 60 miles down to AR headquarters. And then we're gonna fire up the Mustang, probably the, uh, the Z4. We might bring the Mustang back, actually. Maybe we should bring the Mustang GT back so we can get the windows tinted at the same time. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what we're gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna decide, but I also know the water company 
at AR headquarters called me and said they believe my pipes burst, so they shut my water off. So we're gonna be checking that out as well. We got a lot to do. Hopefully that summarizes what this video is gonna be about. I'm gonna continue making sure this fluid is full and then we're gonna hit the road. All right, guys, it's time. We're gonna take this old girl out on the road. I need to get that headlight cleaned up too. This uh, driver's side headlight looks awful. Man, I'm telling you, I'm so excited to take this car out on the highway for the first time. We've got the, uh, it held, man, I'm surprised. The uh, CVT actually held uh, seven quarts, yeah. Seven quarts of CVT and she is finally full. We got a low washer light. Uh, 10 miles again. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and clear the MPGs because it's been sitting here idling. Let's take it down on uh, down on the highway. Take it for a 60 plus mile drive. And uh, can we reset the? Let's reset the trip too. There we go. Everything is now reset to zero. Let's get her out on the road, and uh, let's see how she does. Well, we made it to AR headquarters, guys, and I was greeted with coolant coming out of the petcock of the radiator. I, uh, I don't know, man. It, <laughs> this is, this is what I love about used cars, man. You just never know. The longer you keep them, the more likely something is going to happen. I, I'll take the pet cock out. I'll put it back in. Unfortunately, I'm going to lose all of that coolant. It is what it is. We got the Z4. I'm trying to decide what to drive home, right? What a, what a tough decision, man. Uh, do I drive the Z4 with the top down home? Do I take the Mustang GT home or circling back to the 2012 Altima, do I take the Altima home? Um, man, they are tough decisions. <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, this car did phenomenal, guys. It, it ran and drove out perfect. I honestly can't fault this car at all it went down the road so smooth so comfortably and i believe this car got 30 ish miles a gallon well let's check real quick because honestly i don't remember i did leave it idling just a little bit when i got here making sure cooling fans and everything are working properly let's go ahead and fire it up let's turn the radio off uh, what's the fuel economy say? It says that the trunk is open. <laughs> 30.8, guys. And we drove 65.7 miles. 65.7 miles and got over 30 miles a gallon from a 3.5 liter V6. I don't know, guys. To me, that's pretty damn impressive. So this car is scheduled to go in, by the time you see this video, actually, it'll probably already be in for detail. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. We are going to run a diagnostic on that real quick. I'm going to move this thing to the front of the house, and uh, I'm going to see about flushing out this cooling system, trying to stop that leak, see how the, uh, the lizard's doing. He sure don't like to be messed with, so I hate coming in here. Oh, there. I hope he's not dead. There he is. You're not dead, are you, fella? No, he's alive. He's hunting. He's hungry. He's hungry. He's a hungry guy. He's a hungry man. I wish the... I wish the focus was... Well, that's one way to do it. There you go. Poor little guy. Finally, we can get some humidity in here for him because it's like 40%. Yeah, we got to get some humidity in for the little guy. And before I forget, let's run a diagnostic on the, de uh, the Z4 real quick. Or, no, I got too many cars. I can't remember what I'm working on. On the Altima, let's try to figure out why that check engine light is on. All right, guys, we got some codes. Number one is an engine, fault one, a transmission also. I'm going to assume the transmission has probably got something to do with the fact that it had no fluid in it. And it was run, you know, low on fluid at the same time. So we'll find out together. Let's start with this engine code. Let's find out why we have a check engine light on, and then we'll move on to the transmission. We'll clear these codes, and then, of course, I'll drive the living heck out of it to see if it comes back. Oh, that's a bad one. P0101, two times mass airflow sensor. That, 
that's really, really bad. Now, the fact is that I did mess with the mass airflow sensor moving it around. Um, so it was idling and it was 62 degrees. That almost looks like that was today. Okay, let's uh, erase codes. Yes, yes. And then we'll move over to, uh, let's move over to transmission. We'll see if that code comes back then we're definitely going to replace the mass airflow sensor. Um, I will check the wiring and everything first. All right, moving on to transmission. What do you guys think? I'm, I'm nervous about this, although the drive down here was perfect. I, I don't know when a CVT goes bad. Oh, fluid pressure low. <laughs> Passed. All right, that right, I'd say it's it's safe to, to erase that code. Yes. Yes. All right, now we're getting somewhere, guys. All right, what else we got here? Let's make sure that code is gone, and we can move over to ABS. Maybe a low voltage, low power, I don't know. Oh, there's no ABS light on, so I'm not sure why, why we would have an ABS code. A lot of this stuff can come from low battery. The battery did get so low that it was almost dead. Uh, the car wouldn't even start, and I did have to put it on charge. So there is a possibility some of this stuff could be from uh, just from a dead battery. Um, engine signal won 13 times. Oh... Uh, no. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And then we'll move on to the last code, which is the body control module. I wonder what that one's going to be. All right. Come on. Come on. Real time. You guys tired of watching this screen yet? Oh, wow. Well, can I just read the codes? Is, <laughs> is there no... Uh, is there no, maybe right here? Ah, there we go, there we go. Golly, that thing had a lot of options under it, guys. Let's see what the body control module claims is going on. Uh, flat tire on the right left, right left. I, I'm an idiot. On the rear left, those are all passed, so we can erase those codes as well. And it looks like everything should be good with the exception of possibly a mass airflow sensor. Let's get out of this, and we should be clear. No faults at all. All right, let's get out of this, and let's check under the hood real quick just to double-check the wiring and the plug for the mass airflow sensor. All right, so if you guys remember right, we had to remove the air intake box in order to uh, get all of this stuff out of the way and to get the radiator out. Well, you know, the mass airflow sensor sits right here, so it's worth it just to go ahead and take the plug out, plug it in, take it out, plug it in. The wiring looks all right. It's all nice and enclosed. I don't like that. Why did they bend it at a 90 degree and then zip tie it? That's weird. Yeah, that doesn't seem very professional, but anyway. All right, mass airflow sensor looks like everything's good, so if it comes back, then we know it is a faulty mass airflow sensor. Let's take this off the steering wheel and let's fire it up. Let's see if anything comes back on. We still have that stupid master illuminate, uh, that master indicator lamp. And I know why that's on. It went out earlier and it came back on with low washer. So why don't I put some washer fluid in it real quick? And let's see if that light turns off. And just like that, no more warning lights, not a single one. There's one more thing that we have to do to this in this video, and that requires moving the Mustang GT out of the way. All right, let's get the Mustang moved out so that we can get the uh, Altima in. We've got to... Uh, pull that window down real quick. These doors like to lock themselves. <laughs> nah, not today. Um, what do we got to do? Uh, we got to do the air conditioning on that one, and we got to get that, uh... We got to get the, uh, coolant to stop leaking out of this one. That is no good. All right. Let's, uh, let's move her out. Hopefully there's nothing behind me. I can't see anything. That sun is, that sun is super bright today, guys. Looks like we're good. Yeah, low coolant. 
<laughs> no kidding. No kidding. I'll uh, I'll check that petcock out. Boy, she really does need some shocks, guys. I mean, I've got the shocks. I've got the shocks and struts in the trunk. Come on. A turn signal can be a little flaky sometimes. There we go. It's working out. I got new shocks and struts in the back. I just don't know if I want to... Uh, I don't know if I want to bother with it, man. Like, I really, really want to just get this car down the road and be done with it. I mean, I can send the shocks and struts with it. You know what I mean? I can send the shocks and struts with it to auction. That's not a big deal. I just, uh, I just don't want to put them on. Like, I'm at the point with this car where I'm just like, all right, we did, we did good. It's good, man. Look, look at it, man. Look at this car. She is sick. She is sick. <sighs> I don't know, man. If I do put shocks and struts on, I'm not going to be the one to do it. I'll pay somebody to put them on. I got the shocks and struts. What's it take? Like three hours? It's an easy job. Really? Oh, before I forget, the pipes at AR headquarters are fine. The pipes are good, guys. Thankfully, I was so, so worried that we were going to get here and find that the house had been flooded. And it's not. Uh, we got real lucky. The water's turned back on. And uh, actually, I should probably go ahead and check the meter real quick just to verify. Let's see down in there. In case you guys haven't ever seen a water meter before. She's not spinning. We're holding pressure. Good deal. Put the cap back on. And uh, there we go. Our, ooh, easy. <laughs> Be my luck, I'll fall in. All right, let's pull the Altima into the garage. And, oh man, damn, that thing was leaking coolant for a minute, wasn't it? Made a mess. Let's get this in here. Uh, are you kidding me? Oh, does that light come on just because a door is open? You've got to be joking. That's kind of stupid. Look at this. <laughs> okay, so if a door is open, that light's going to come on. Now, I got somebody... To, oh, there's a trash can behind me. I got somebody to introduce you guys to if he wants to be on camera. He lives right down the road from AR headquarters. He's a fellow entrepreneur. Oh, did, entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. Entre, yeah, he's one of those. He's a fellow entrepreneur. And uh, if he wants to be on camera... I want to introduce you guys to him because I'm hoping that uh, he's going to be a new friend to AAR and he's giving me seats for the Mustang GT. You guys remember that one front seat is kind of tore up? Well, he said he's got some front seats that we could have and he lives right down the road. All right, let me get my air conditioning equipment set up. Let's pull a vacuum so that we can get the AC charged. This car is one step closer to being done. All right, it's that time. Before we can do anything, we got to pull a vacuum on it for at least 30 minutes, guys. Really, an hour or two is ideal. But here's the thing. We know that this system worked before we took it apart. Okay, so unless we damaged an O-ring here, this system should be working just fine. It's in the same condition it was when we took it apart. So we've got our manifold gauges. Make sure they're wide open. We've got the blue to low, the red to high, as you can see there. We got the yellow going to the vacuum pump. Pump is plugged into an extension cord. And voila, you should be able to watch these gauges. There they go. Dip down, man. The lower they go, the better. Probably easier to watch this one, I guess. There she goes. See that needle touching almost 30? That's what you want. So instead of boring you guys with the rest of this, I'm going to just leave this running for about half an hour, at which point we will lock the valves closed, we will shut off the pump, and we'll hope that it holds a vacuum. Yeah, before somebody comments, we don't close the valves. You don't close the valves. You leave the valves open, all right? Open, and then you shut off the compressor, and then you watch to make sure that you're not losing vacuum. Look at that. That's a... That's a damn good vacuum right there all right that right there is exactly what you want to see shut it off leave it open let it sit there and you know hold a vacuum for another half hour and then we can charge it up easy peasy oh boy <laughs> you know what else i forgot 
the Ford Tempo needs to be going to the city, I need to send this to Mako, like now, before I change my mind. I don't want to change my mind. It's got so many little dings all down the side of it that need to be... I'm not going to have them, like, do anything crazy. I want to tell them, just go ahead and fill it, man. Just make it look good. Put a fresh paint job on her, and she'll look just like she did the day she rolled off the factory floor. Well, maybe not just like the day she rolled off the factory floor, but close. We got the Z4 out, man. I had to. I had to bust out. And you know what? The top went down on its own today. I didn't have to help it. I didn't have to do anything. Just push the button. Down she went. Look at that car, man. She is. She's sexy. This car right here, sexy as well, man. Parking these cars in front of the house makes my house look better. Truthfully. <laughs> Hopefully it raises property value around here. Uh, I can't get that pet cock to come loose, so I got some equalizers here. I'm going to try to uh, get it loose and see if we broke the gasket or something on it. Well guys, I just did the most awful thing ever. I finished this car without you. <laughs> uh, this gentleman that I said was gonna come over and introduce himself did. Uh, he spent quite a few hours here and we did a lot of talking and through all of that, I honestly got kind of sidetracked. I kept working on the car, I just didn't keep recording. Um, Uh-oh, no key. Oh, I keep losing the damn key to this thing. Uh, so I want to apologize for not finishing this, but we're not done. We're not done. We are going to take a different car home. Um, let me see if I can find the key. There it is. We're going to take a different car home tonight. Uh, and it's going to be one we haven't taken anywhere before other than down the street. The BMW Z4. Yeah, we're going to do it, man. We're going to take the BMW... Uh, close to 70 miles home and see if it makes it. Alright, see if all the lights are still off. Hold on, that stupid triangle light's on because the door's open. Alright, all good. All good, and I'm going to turn the air on. Let's see. Ah, compressor! And... Alright, the car's been sitting for a few hours. Ice cold air, guys. Wow. Okay. I'm going to roll this window up. I'm going to shut the car down. I about dropped the camera. And we're done with this one for now. For this video, we're finished. Make sure I got all my stuff out of the back. I did. Uh, make sure I got everything out of the trunk. Because I am going to take a different car home tonight. Yep. I'm going to leave this one here to think about its behavior. Now I'm leaving this one here uh, because I just, I now we know, we know this car made it down here. I don't need to drive it back to the city. I think that's not as entertaining to you guys. So why don't we take something we haven't put any miles on and that's the BMW. We'll take the BMW, that'll be the end of the video. I do gotta show you guys something though. Uh, I've had a lot of people buying my merch lately. All right, this is a face mask. Please don't ask me to wear it. You're, you want me to wear it. You want. You want to see what it looks like on me. Okay. All right, fine. I didn't want to wear it for you. I didn't want to, but I have had a lot of you ask to see the merchandise on me. So fine, fine. There it is. All right. There's the face masks. And yes, they're cloth. So they're, they're elastic banded in their cloth and they should last a long time. You know, obviously keep them clean because your breath is probably gonna stink. Well, I don't know. I've got stink breath, so mine needs to be clean regularly. Your breath may smell like roses. I don't know. We also have phone cases. Uh, this one is for my phone particularly, the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a freaking case. I don't know what more you want. It's a case, and yes, it's got my mug on it, and it says dead as a doornail. So uh, definitely go check out the merchandise down below the video. All right, now we found that the leak from this was caused by a broken O-ring on that uh, petcock. Uh, thankfully, this gentleman that came and introduced himself tonight, Mike Jones, that's his name, his name is Mike Jones, uh, had an entire O-ring kit that he let us uh, grab a couple O-rings out of. So the Mustang should be back to normal. We're gonna fire it up, make sure we get the uh, coolant circulating through it here. You heard the doors lock? Yeah, they love to do that. They love to do that. I hate that about this car. The doors love to lock on you. Woo wee. She sounds.
sounds good, man. Well, I'm hopeful that we're gonna be able to introduce Mike Jones on the channel soon. He's got some pretty cool cars out at his place. And I think he's gonna do well on YouTube, I really do. He's just now getting started. He doesn't even have a channel yet, so I can't give you his channel name, but just stay tuned, guys. He's gonna come help us out with getting the front wheels off of the Swamp slash Fire Corvette very soon. Um, he's gonna come help us with that, and hopefully I'll introduce him to you guys in the near future. And uh, hopefully he gets a channel started. I think I think his channel is going to be a lot of fun. He's a fabricator. He's a paint and body guy. He uh, does upholstery, leather working. Um, like this does this guy does everything. Like everything, anything you can imagine, he can do it. He even built his own mufflers for a Mustang, just like this one that he has at his house. He built them from scratch. Built his own side exit exhaust and fabricated his own mufflers so uh all right we got water in there i'm gonna let this thing circulate warm up a little bit i'm gonna make sure it's not leaking then i'm gonna shut it down and i'm gonna leave it here and uh it's also it's also a little chilly out man i'm kind of leery about taking the beamer with the top down but i don't know if the top will go back up <laughs> on its own uh it went down on its own let's see if it'll go up on its own oh Boy, this car is, this car is little. It's a little car. Oh, look at those self-leveling headlights, man. Oh yeah, all right. Top closed. Something tells me it's gonna need help. Oh, here it goes. Eh. Here she comes. She's slow, but she's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys probably can't even see it. <laughs> Very slow. Oh, and that's that's where she stopped. Okay. Um, is there no chance of pushing the button again and getting it to come a little further? Uh. It, button doesn't do anything now uh-oh well thankfully you can just pull it closed man and yeah unfortunately the the button now doesn't do anything i bet if you shut it off no uh-oh crap there it goes and it just locked all right, so the top doesn't work perfectly, guys, but at least it works. Um, you think I'm driving all the way home with that top down? You're crazy. It's chilly. Yeah, so the top obviously is a little low on fluid, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it works. Boy, those lights are, golly, those are bright. All right, come back over to the Mustang. Sorry for the shaky and grainy video see how things are looking in here all right the temperature is starting to move I don't want to leave that cap off too long we all know how that worked out for me last time man that uh that Milwaukee light right that Milwaukee is a beast as you can see out here guys it's uh I mean look you can even see the stars now you can even see the moon. It's dark, but that light, man, <laughs> she's like the sun. All right, guys, I'm not gonna make you sit and watch this. I'm going to finish making sure this thing is done. I'm gonna go grab some of my stuff from the shop and we are gonna hit the road and see how the BMW does on its journey home. All right, guys, here we go. I've reset the trip and I've reset the fuel economy. Uh, this is going to be the first real drive, man, and this is going to be a heck of a drive. It's somewhere between 60 and 70 miles. I'm taking the back way, so we'll see what that does for us. But as you can see, uh, trip is down. Well, I can't show you. Left uh, gauge cluster there. All right, 21 miles a gallon average currently. Shaky camera, bright lights. Let's hit the road. Woo! Whoa! <laughs> Damn! 
dude, this car is sick. This car is sick. Well, guys, we are about halfway there. I figured I'd do a little uh, update video. As you can see, we're still cruising and the video is still shaky because it's dark. But what I find very interesting here is that we are managing to achieve almost 34 miles a gallon from a straight six. It's a six cylinder car, guys, and she's still getting almost 34 miles a gallon with 123,000 miles on it. We haven't done an alignment or anything. It is getting late. I'm looking forward to getting home. I'm tired. It's 11 o'clock at night. By the time I get to the house, I expect it'll be 11.30, 11.40. But uh, so far, guys, oh, that focus is, there we go. That focus was bad. So far, guys, the car is doing great. No complaints at all. It's relatively quiet for a convertible. I'm looking forward to getting to the house and concluding this video. Well, guys, I apologize in advance for the video quality. Believe me, I know it's pretty rough right now. Look how bad that fender looks, though. I mean, it just looks awful, guys. Maybe I can get it PDR'd. I don't know. Either way, she made it home, and the dealer plate survived. It's still intact. I dropped the top when I pulled up. You know, got to pop my collar a little bit. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you something, guys. This car is such a blast to drive. I really do enjoy it. Not just saying that. Let's... uh the fuel economy. I know you don't buy one of these cars for fuel economy. 32 miles a gallon over 65 miles uh, highway and city driving. So honestly, can't complain about the fuel economy in this little thing either. Lots of pep, fun car, handles like it's on rails. Absolutely love it. And now we know it's reliable. Yeah, it's next to Old Faithful over here, guys, <laughs> right next to Big Bertha. Guys, I've got dinner waiting for me lasagna. I'm going to sit down, enjoy a hot meal. I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to go to bed. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you did, do what you always do. Hit the thumbs up button, share the video with your friends, comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed, get your merchandise down below, Teespring, and uh, yeah, follow me on Facebook and Instagram, Auto Auction Rebuilds. Till next time, I look forward to seeing you all very soon in the next one.